so All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're on to our next segment, Killing Music. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to have Rudy Hernandez come up. Rudy Hernandez, host of your show today. And he's going to come up with Mr. C. Zapina, who is also known as Flippin' NJ on Instagram. If you ain't everybody following knows who him, he is. follow this dude. Okay? Everybody knows who he is. Can we get uh, everybody from the back in there who's just lounging? I, they got to come and see this segment. If they have any love for me, they'd come out. So we keep, can we get them out, please? I'll get them. Get seated. I'll Thank get you, Dave. I appreciate it. So it, it, it brings me great pleasure to, to bring someone who I've gotten to know in the past few months very well um, and who's changed the game in a different way on many different levels. Author of his own book. Uh, and I think many of you from Jersey know exactly who he is. He's the master flipper. Let's bring it up for Caesar. Pina, come on up here. But he's also getting walked up by my favorite boxer, the champion. If you didn't see him on ESPN a few weeks back, Mr. Edgar Berlanga, undefeated, 18-0 from Brooklyn, New York. Let's give him a round of applause. Champ of the world. Let's get him a mic. Did you get a mic? You got a word? You got some words to say to the crowd or you're going to be shy? No. <laughs> Anyway, just wanted to give, I wanted to bring the, the champ up here, give him some major love, and I would all love for you guys to wish him a speedy recovery in his fight that we were at and that we helped sponsor for Mr. Edgar. He tore his bicep, just got out of surgery a week ago, and is in full recovery mode. But guys, if you haven't heard the name, and I'm sure most of you have, you're definitely going to hear the kid's name. He's the only boxer in history, correct me if I'm wrong, that in his first 16 professional fights, knocked out his opponent in the first round. Am I right or wrong? He's the, you're a super middleweight? He's a super middleweight Mike Tyson of his era. 16 fights, everyone went down in the first round. God bless the kid, good kid, love his family, new father, nothing but respect. I want everyone to wish him the best in a speedy recovery, and I can't wait to see you back, hopefully, in Puerto Rico in March. My man, thank you. Appreciate you, all right? Now, you can have a seat wherever you feel comfortable, Caesar, Mr. Flippin' NJ, because I'm going to grill him today. Whatever you want. You can sit, if you want love, if you want to just chill, whatever you want. All right, anything you want, Edgar. So let me get to my questionnaire here for Caesar. Caesar, why don't you go ahead and start us off with who it is you are, what it is that you do, and what made you who you are, and why are you so famous? How you guys doing? So, my name is Cesar Pina. Most people know me as Flippin' NJ. I am a real estate investor from Patterson, New Jersey. I've been in real estate now for about 15 years. Patterson. Um, so, I've been a real estate investor now for about 15 years. I started doing real estate seminars about three years ago with DJ Envy from The Breakfast Club. Uh, I also dropped my first book this year, uh, number one on Wall, Wall Street. Amazon, you know, I, I, you know I, I've done a couple things, right? Uh, but my true passion is real estate, right? As far as uh, uh, rental properties, I own right now and manage around the country about 1,600 rental units. Wait, wait, say that again. Hold on a second. Guys in the back, guys in the back, guys in the back, guys in the back. I want you to hear this. How many? Stand up and say it. 1,600 rental units. Around the country, 1600 right? 1600 rental units around the country. I am. I started in New Jersey, right? Flipping NJ, right? So I started in New Jersey. Then eventually, as the market started changing, I realized that for me to hit my road goal of over a thousand units, I will have to go nationwide. So that's when I started expanding. So right now, we own and manage 1600 rental units. And I also flip about anywhere between 80 to 100 properties a year. Uh, the main pro the main markets where I flip properties is New Jersey, Florida, Atlanta, and as far as rentals, my main rent most of my rentals are New Jersey, uh, Florida, and Chicago. All right, can I ask you a question? And everybody's probably wanting to know this: How'd you get started? Um, I'm pretty much street educated, right? <laughs> um, I don't have a fancy degree. I don't even have a real estate license. Um, pretty much I was always good with numbers, right? Um, I always knew real estate was the way, right, to achieve true wealth, but I never really went after it. 
when I, when I was around 18, 19 years old, um, we lived in this house in Clifton, New Jersey. We had moved from New York, and we lived there for about 10 years, right? And our landlord sold the house, and I was sitting on the table with my dad, and he showed us that we, after all those years that we paid rent in that property, it paid off his house. And now we paid off his house, and now he sold it again. And back then, you know, it was like the 90s. The house sold for like a buck 40. But it's crazy. And I was like, yo, real estate is the way to go. So you figure at that moment right there, I would get into real estate. But I didn't. I chose the streets. Um, like I said, I'm street educated. And everybody told me, oh, if you don't change, you got to stop what you're doing, you're going to go to prison. So I went to prison. <laughs> I didn't listen to anybody, right? I knew everything, so I went to prison, right? So, so, so that's, that, that's what happened. And then, but for me, me going to prison, it was a blessing, right? Because I could have went to prison for a lot of other things that I did that was worse, right? I only did got like under two years. But in prison, I met a real estate developer. So as he was coming in, I was going out, and he taught me. I, I taught him how to bid because he he's never been in trouble before. And then he taught me about real estate. So that was back in 2006. I come home. My daughter was just born. My daughter was actually born while I was in prison. Uh, I come home, and it was the Wild Cabo days, and I started doing mortgages, which is kind of crazy, right? I just came out of prison, and I'm doing fucking mortgages. <laughs> like, well, like, you know, what, what, what the fuck is wrong with that picture? By but the that, way, that's but, news to me. I had no idea. Yeah, but yeah. that's, you know, okay. that, that was the market back then. Right, you know right. what I mean? I remember the first deal I did was a stated, stated, 100% financing, the lady was 80 years old, and I got her a mortgage. Right. She was on Social Security. That shit makes no sense. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> like, how the hell did that get approved? Right. So I was doing mortgages. Shit was great. Boom, 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 making crazy money. Ten, twenty thousand. just came home from prison. And then the market collapses a year and a half later. So I get out the mortgage business. I open up a restaurant. I'm not a fucking chef. My wife isn't a chef. But you know what? F good location. Let's open up a Spanish restaurant. We'll do great. My mother-in-law could cook. Easy. My easy. My mother-in-law. <laughs> That's funny. Hell fucking no. <laughs> we lost everything. I'm sorry if I curse, but you know, that, like I said. You, you said know, you were street educated. I'm street educated. I don't have a fancy degree. You know what I mean? Hello. So, so it is what it pass, is, right? right? So at that moment, everybody was running away from real estate, right? Uh, I was in the restaurant for like a year and a half, two years. We lost everything. Our houses were in, in pre-foreclosure. We were losing everything, right? It was horrible. Every day I would go to work, and my wife, I would drop her off at the salon. Her and my mother-in-law were fighting in the car. Now I got to go to work with my mother-in-law and deal with that shit all day. It was, a, it, it was a nightmare, right? The, the only good thing about the restaurant business was that uh, it you got, got me. Eat. I used to watch novellas in the back with the ladies in the novelas, kitchen. Okay. So that was, that was the only thing that I really learned in the restaurant business. So... There was a property in Patterson, New Jersey. It was for $20,000. And I was like, shit, I see an opportunity here, right? So I, I, I got that property. I made $70,000, and I closed that restaurant the next fucking day. <laughs> and I've been doing real estate ever since. So just like most of you here. Good for you. Okay. So... Do you have a number? So you own six. You currently own sixteen hundred rental units. That's a lot of units, by the way. But it's gonna be eighteen hundred by Monday. Oh, I got oh too I'm close. sorry. Okay. So, but <laughs> this guy sells yet. me title in my that? sleep every every five minutes. I'm like, look, let's go out to dinner. Do you need a title? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you're my title guy. God so, damn it. So I got a so I got a question for you, right? So over the years. How many, I, I'm interested on the flips, because your name is Flipping NJ. Yeah. You got a, it's a best-selling book, by the way, yes? Number, yes, sir. You, you should I, I hope you bought it, Rudy. I did. Right. Actually, I didn't need to. You gave it to me. All right, you all right, all right. I'll make you, you sure. It you know, I, I give a lot of books. So it's a number one seller. I was number one on Wall Street. I was top 100 USA Today. Um, I was num seven time on Amazon, seven, seven time on Barnes & Noble. And... Man, what, hey, what a, what a hell, heck of a story, by the way. So in this, in this market, how hard is it to find um, a good deal? How is it far now compared to as where it was when you were really warming up and getting your feet wet? I think right now, right, in this market, it is tough, right? 
But the thing about it is that every single person in this room already has experience, right? Everybody's making money, flipping properties. So sometimes you got to go outside your, com your comfort zone, right? So when I first started, I was buying houses in Pasig County, 70, 80,000, you know, Essex County, right? Boom, boom, whatever. And I was like, I thought that was going to last forever. It didn't, right? So now, the, all these houses that I paid for 70, 80, 100,000, now they're all worth 500,000, wow. right? Which makes no fucking sense. Like, because we saw that last market when everything collapsed, and then COVID hit, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to lose everything. And it just went insane, right? It, this market's insane right now. So now what I do is I'm selling some of those properties. I take that money and I go to other markets where I could do the same thing that I did in Jersey. Give me an example. I'll, gi I'll give you an example. You said the Chicago. I'll give you a deal right now. Look, I'm going to give you, you guys a deal right now. Right now. Did you purchase it already or are you purchasing nah. it? Anybody in this room could get this deal right now. Okay, go. Right. Shoot. All right. 7,000 South Ra Racine Ave, R-A-C-I-N-E Ave, right? This is a 10-unit building in Chicago, Illinois, right? Chicago is pretty much where Patterson, Newark, East Orange was like 10 years ago, right? That kind of market where you could go pick up a three-family home under 100000 and it's worth like two-something already. Rents are pretty good compared to when I started. When I started in Patterson, rents were like $900 which is crazy, now we're at 2000 an apartment, or that, that, I can't even imagine that. Over there, it's already at $1,400, right? This particular property you could get right now, 420 is listed for, I'm cheap, I'll try to get it for 350 right? This isn't the only deal like this, though. There's, like, inventory everywhere, right? So, you get this property for 420 right? Let's say uh, you, you put 10% down, right? And let's say at 350 you put 10% down, it's 35000 right? All right. Now, most of you guys in here know that when you get into commercial, it's based on the income of the property, right? That's what gives it the value, right? This particular property, the value's already, you're buying it at three fifty is already worth 800000 850000 So you got a shitload of equity, right? So very easy, right? A $35,000 investment. The building's worth eight fifty right now. This property doesn't even need work, right? So I'm, get, I'm telling you a property that's renovated already, not a property that needs work. You get that property, you go, a couple months later, you refinance at 637, right? That's your new loan amount, right? Boom, 637. Now, what do you do? Do you buy a Rolex, buy a, br a nice bracelet, a nice car? No, that's not what you do, right? So now... You walk away. You walked away with two hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars, right? When you refi, you got two hundred and eighty-seven thousand dollars to play with. To put it back into another property. That's it. But not even that, right? Now we're gonna take that two hundred eighty-seven thousand, right? Divide it into five, right? Remember. Why? Why divide it to five? What? Because now I just bought five buildings, so I started with thirty-five thousand dollars. Now that became two hundred eighty-seven thousand. I take that 87, I divide it into five, I buy five buildings. Now, when I do the same thing again and I refi all those five buildings, right. I got $1.4 million to play with. Now I take that 1.4 and I buy 20 buildings. So that's what you do. So that's what you've been doing? That's what I've been doing the last 15 when do years. You know, when do you know to flip and when do you hold? It depends. For me, it's different, right? When I flip properties, I need to make at least net 100000 150000 That's the number that I like. When it comes to rental properties, anything that nets me around 2000 to 2500 I will keep. That's the number, you know, th that I like. Yeah, that I clear, I guess. Because God forbid something happens, taxes go up, insurance goes up, somebody doesn't pay me, I'm covered. Did you have any hiccups on the, in the flipping side of the business when you started flipping? Because that's how you started, yes? It was more of a flip business. Now you're more into yeah. development and uh, you're holding, you're not flipping as much. What type of hiccups did you run into when you started flipping? Like, if... Is, is there, by the way, I got to ask a general question. Is there an opportunity in this marketplace or is it so saturated and you've got all of the data, yeah. you've got this down packed. And I've had conversations with this man because I've asked him. The flipping game, in my opinion, has kind of sideways itself because of the way the market has shifted. But you're still doing it. So because you're savvy and you understand the market probably better than most. Um, is there an opportunity for anyone who wants to get into the flipping game? Is there still that opportunity out there? Oh, definitely, right? Because properties are still going up in value. The market's not going to change at least for another two years, right? 
But the most important thing you got to remember. Wait, 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 wait. Let me stop you there for a second. Agreed. Yep. But everyone here knows that market values are so high right now. And there's so little, there's so little inventory, even though Tom said otherwise, yep. but there's so little inventory that it isn't like you're buying anything for, for below or typically above, you're not buying anything above market value. So how is it still consistent with All your right. game plan? You have to adapt to the market, right? When I first started, I'm buying houses for 70,000. Then I'm buying high houses for 100,000. Then I'm buying houses for 150. Now I'm buying houses for 250 to because you really truly so, so the value is going to keep the going. values are going up uh, right where right now everything is going up so you have to adapt to the market right because back then when I first started there was so many houses for 70 uh, uh, 70 thousand 100 thousand and I was like sometimes I would get into an argument with the agent or somebody and didn't buy that house now I passed by the house and I'm like fuck I should have bought that house right so the market always changes right now the market is an upswing right and th that's not going to last. And what all you people in this room have to understand is that all you guys are making great commissions now. If you're a mortgage broker, if you're a realtor, if you're this or that, right? But when that storm hits, that you you're not getting those commissions anymore, and now the average commission is on a property of $100,000, what the hell are you going to do then? Because everybody now is, you know, buying cars, buying, going on vacations, posting that shit on Instagram. But when the market changes, and if you didn't invest your money, you're screwed. So now is when you got to think about later on. You sacrifice now, get use those high commissions, and you buy some rental properties in That's different the markets. That's the you know? So I see that we're running a little short on time right now, Cesar. I'm going to leave you with this. How long did it take you? And I, 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 I can see there's some, some questions that want to be asked, so I'm going to get to that in a second. How long did it take you to scale your business from flipping to rental properties to now you're developing? How, how long was that process? 15 years. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about the development side, quickly, briefly. Well, development, I think, is still a great opportunity in New Jersey because land is still cheap compared to other things that you could do, right, besides the flipping and the rental properties. In the tri-state area, you could still get a good deal on land, right? Give us Br an example. Last brief example. Yeah. Right now, I'm putting up a 50-unit building in Main Street in Patterson, New Jersey. I got the lot for four and a quarter. All land with my construction loans, I'm going to be at $5 million, right? Same example I gave you before. I'm all in at five million, my construction loans, all that stuff, right? Boom. When I go, when I'm done and that building is already rented and I'm cash flowing, that building is not worth $18 million. Now I go to the bank, I refinance, and I walk away with five million dollars. And you just do it Tax again. Tax-free. Because there's no again. capital gains on, on bank money. And you do it again. And I do it again. I already got 10 <laughs> deals like that. All right. So it's evident and obvious that Caesar and I need to have a lot more conversations. <laughs> um, Just don't, sell me, don't try to sell me any more titles. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Don't even lie. All right. Questions for the audience. I know some of you guys got questions. Go ahead. So when you refinance the property, you don't pay capital gains because it's part of your loan. So even though I'm You're walking away with $5 million, I'm depositing $5 million, I'm not paying taxes on that. It's part of my loan amount. Yes, I have a lot of family members. I have, fa and I just move them to different states where I, whenever I take over. Yeah, 1,600 rental units. So that's like the, my growth. Uh, yeah. Oh, I got a couple of them. Awesome, guys. Anyone else have a question? Yes, this, I'm bringing the mic. What's your name? All right, Ruben's got a question. Hey, Caesar, how are you? Ruben hey, what's going on, Ruben? Uh, Lifestyle International in the house. I know you do I a lot of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, seriously, right? Where's, where's but George? thank you for where's coming, though. The thank George you for Lee? coming. The George Lee. Uh, all right, you guys, we got to talk about this. Anyways, um, I know you do a, a lot of flips George and stuff right like that. Where <laughs> does uh, the majority of business come from? I know you're a big auction guy. You have a lot of uh, properties that you get from auction. How do you put your hands into auction because I tried many times and I won the bids and then when I went to claim the property someone else took them so I don't know if there's a loophole or something that you know of not I don't know if you want to share that with us or well right now that. to be honest with you there really isn't no auction properties right especially in the tri-state area because the whole COVID thing but there is a flood coming you are going to see a lot of properties uh after January February um I have uh our seminars were sponsored by auction.com, and I know they just hired like a thousand new employees 
because they know, you know, the flood is coming. But it's not a flood like back, you know, in 08, 09, not like that. It's just the people that never paid the mortgage before COVID that haven't paid. Those properties, you're going to see a lot of those hit the market. Foreclosures. Yep. Got it. Okay, sure. to get your money by saying, oh, we'll give you pre-foreclosures. And I think, it's a, isn't it like if you miss payments after five times, you start getting into pre-foreclosure, but then once they pay that money back, it comes right out. So how do you know when that home really is going to go to foreclosure? I mean. Well, you, um, you could actually go to whatever county the property's in, and they'll show you who, who just got filed on. Because once you pass that, the paperwork, the docket number, everything, you're going to see the foreclosure filing. But those lists, I, I know what you're talking about, they're yeah, bullshit. They They've been bullshit. around forever. I, you know, I, I never got any deals from those lists. Right, so now that they don't have the auction, and for, for are they coming back? Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes, starting in, in the tri-state area, since New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, were judicial states, all those properties, all those people are going to start getting foreclosed on. Before COVID, they weren't paying, they were about to get foreclosed on. You're going to see that wave hit. So you go to auction.com to see when those auctions will yeah, be I, and where? I think, yeah, I think uh, I, I get a lot of properties from auction.com. I get a lot of properties from HubZoo. You know, pre-COVID, I want to say in the last year, once COVID hit, I probably still picked up about 20 properties from them. But, you know, or, around Sight the country. Sight unseen? Yes. I, oh, yeah, I buy stuff without even looking. Yeah, most yeah. of them. A lot of them, yeah. Incredible. That's interesting. Guys, give a round of applause for Caesar. Thank you very much. My man. And Edgar Bellan.